Hey, YouTube family, and welcome to another edition of The Kevin Strong Show. I am your host, Kevin Strong. Sorry I wasn't able to put out a video last week, but I'm back. I decided to change my virtual background. You know, I was going to do something a little bit different. I thought about doing like an African theme or something like that, but I didn't want to be distracted during the video. <laughs> just kidding, just kidding. You know me, I always got to say something funny. At least it's funny to me. So if you're new to the channel and you are laughing right now, take a pause for the calls. Subscribe to my channel. I'll try to be as PC as possible. Like and share because I care. In this video, without further ado, we're going to jump in about the unforeseen commercial real estate crisis that our American economy is facing. We're going to dive into some numbers. I'm going to break it up into regions, and then we're going to talk about something that's called the broken window theory and how that is going to be exacerbated by the implosion of commercial real estate. And then finally, last but I, last but not least, I'm going to leave you with some of my parting thoughts. So once again, without further ado, let's go ahead and jump into this um, this topic here. And let's see here. There we go. All right. So commercial real estate, unseen storm. Let's jump right into it. So commercial real estate prices could plummet as much as 40%. This is what some of the experts are saying in this particular space. Uh, from its peak, this could be the worst crash since 2008, the financial crisis, a.k.a. GFC. This is according to Morgan Stanley's wealth management chief investment officer. Second bullet point, analysts forecast a peak to trough from top to bottom of commercial real estate price declines, like I said, as much as 40%, uh, more than 50% Okay, more than 50% of the $2.9 trillion in commercial mortgages will need to be renegotiated in the next two years when new lending rates are likely to be up by 350 to 450 basis points. So let me take a pause right now and kind of explain exactly what this actually means for those of you who don't follow the commercial space. Commercial loans are typically amortized over a 25-year period where residentials are 30. But the big difference with commercial is that the fixed rate isn't for 30, I mean, isn't for 25 years. It can be fixed for three, five, maybe up to as much as seven. You can get some interest-only products on commercial real estate lending, three, four, and five, seven years. But at the end of the day, at some point in time, typically within a 10-year period, you are mandated by the language in that contract that you must refinance your mortgage, the loan on that property. The problem that the commercial space is facing is that there were a ton of people who thought rates would stay low for a long, long time, forever, forever, ever, forever, ever. <laughs> They thought it was going to be that way. OK, so they took out massive amounts of money years ago, maybe at two, three, four percent. I've talked about this in previous videos. Now these rates are seven, eight plus percent. Vacancy rates are up. Income in the commercial space is being reduced. So these commercial buildings aren't producing the income that they once were a couple of years ago. And now, as I said previously, it's required that some of these loans are getting ready to reset or have to be renegotiated. The interest rate is doubling. Vacancy rates are going up. The rent that they were collecting maybe in, in, in 2019 is not the same rent that they're getting in 2022 and 2023. So a lot of these commercial uh, deals are gonna have to be renegotiated by the banks, typically held by regional banks, or a lot of times the lender is just going to say, hey, here's the keys. I just don't want to deal. So I just wanted to take a moment to explain that for those of you who don't follow the commercial space. Next point, risk to regional banks, given small and mid, uh, medium sized banks, they hold, regional small banks hold 80% of the U.S. commercial real estate debt that's outstanding. So this is going to have a huge impact Um losses in terms of the impact on their balance sheets for regional and small banks. And this is why some people think that a lot of people are pushing their money away from regional banks and jumping into the bigger banks because there's a liquidity crisis going on, run on some of the banks. And what's going to also exacerbate some of those regional banks is when they start to experience these losses from bad commercial loans. 
High borrowing costs and tighter credit conditions caused by the banking turmoil could raise hurdles for big real estate investors as they seek to refinance a pile of loans. And that's exactly what I was talking about. Nearly $450 billion in commercial real estate debt is due to mature just in this year. Think about that. That's almost, um, what, a, a half a trillion dollars that has to be reset under various ominous conditions. So the outlook for commercial real estate is definitely, definitely negative, especially in the office space. Okay, so here's some numbers. We're going to kind of fly through some of this uh, information. I don't want to get you guys too caught up in the weeds, but just pay attention to obviously it shows you what market and then the next column over, it says February 23 listing rate. Go ahead and ignore that. And I want you guys to focus on the third column, column total vacancy. So as you can see here, the higher the vacancy in that particular market, the worse off that particular commercial uh, market is doing, primarily office space. So as you can see, leading the pack is San Francisco. Uh, then you got the Bay Area, San Diego. A lot of stuff is going on in the California area. This is basically the Western region. And definitely up there, I, you know, my hometown, Seattle, you guys can see that. Uh, Seattle's at about 18.2% vacancy rate. Uh, we're going to go through a couple of other regions, but when I looked at this collectively in aggregate, Seattle came in probably at about the sixth or seventh uh, highest vacancy rate in terms of, you know, commercial space or, um, or office space in a negative way in the country. So <clears throat> that's definitely, definitely not a good thing. Southern region, as you can see here, Miami, uh, Austin, Washington, D.C., <coughs> excuse me, guys, um, Charlotte, uh, Austin's really up there. As you can see, Austin, Atlanta are, and Houston are at the 20 percent vacancy rate. Now, this is as it is right now. This is going to get much worse six months from now. Much, much worse. Those numbers could easily go up another Five percentage points, I would probably say, by the end of the year, very realistically. You see Houston, Dallas, Tampa, and then Orlando. Okay, northeast region, we've got here Manhattan, 16%. Um, Brooklyn, Boston, not too bad at 9%. New Jersey, and Philadelphia. So once again, these are vacancy rates in major markets, and these are areas to look out for because as I get further down this video, we're going to talk about this broken um, window theory and how that basically is going to exacerbate this problem and eventually affect uh, the quality of life for businesses and condos in that area. So here we go. For those of you who have never heard of this before, this is called the broken window theory. There is a theory that homes with broken windows left unpaired will attract more crime. It appears that no one cares for the property and additional criminal behavior has little risk of detection. In effect, you know, in effect, our environment communicates to people. You know, our environment invites either good or bad behavior. So here's a little info chart that I was able to pull up it says disorder goes untreated. We don't do anything about it. Citizens become fearful and withdraw from the community. We've seen a little of that when the uh, when the uh, health crisis popped off for other reasons. But as crime is starting to pick up in major metropolitan cities, people are moving away from those areas uh, to live and they're relocating their businesses. Informal social control decreases and or perceived to be low by criminals. And finally, disorder and crime increases as criminals increase their activity in the area. Listen to me, folks. Here's the deal with this stuff, especially areas like Seattle. What's going to happen, in my humble opinion, this is not financial advice or anything like that. This is just my editorial two cents. Here's the deal. Civil unrest is going to escalate beyond anyone's imagination. It's already off the charts. OK, it's already off the charts. No respect for school authority. No respect for law enforcement. Wait till these food crises start to uh, begin to um, escalate. It's just a hot mess. The reason why I'm bringing this to your attention about this broken window theory is this. As businesses start to fail, as people start to get laid off and people start to lose their homes, 
sales tax and property tax are the main source of revenue for most metropolitan cities throughout the United States. So as these bigger cities and small cities see their budgets being squeezed like they've never been squeezed before, they're going to have to cut back on services in order to account for a shortfall in their budget. One of the biggest chunks of uh, a city's budget is typically public safety, law enforcement. Follow me here. So places like Seattle that's offering $30,000 uh, or they were, what, $25,000, $30,000 uh, signing bonuses for people. Uh, they're called laterals who have previous experience that want to get, who want to come on board with Seattle. A lot of these agencies are hurting for law enforcement. So you're not going to be able to recruit and retain officers if you're at a budget deficit. And so the staffing issue in, in these large cities is going to continue to become a problem. And at the same time, the perfect storm is going to be some of these large, large office buildings are going to become vacant. That's going to invite crime. You don't have the budget to bring in the law enforcement personnel to clean that crime up. Homeless starts to permeate throughout these areas. And it's just a hot, hot mess. It takes a long, 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 long time to turn something like that around. Just south of Seattle in Pierce County, Tacoma, has some seedy spots and have some good spots. But those of you who have lived in this area longer than I have knows that Seattle, I mean, that Seattle, that Tacoma has turned it around a little bit, but it takes a long time, like well beyond five years. You don't start to have a broken window theory, start inviting homelessness and criminal activity and have a inadequate police force to service and clean up those areas and think all of a sudden within a couple of years, you're going to be able to write that ship. It is a hot, hot mess. And I think people will continue to migrate away from large, urban, heavily dense populated areas. So my final thoughts is downtown office vacancy rate uh, during the great financial crisis was around 13.5% back in 2008. Today, it's at 17.5. That's a 30% increase from during the financial crisis of 2008. And once again, we're probably in the first inning of this commercial real estate crisis. Commercial loans are non-recourse loans. Underwriting is based on income, which basically means the bank cannot go after the investor on a personal level. A non-recourse loan is that you can take the property back. These, partic these particular commercial real estate properties are held in LLCs or other type of asset protection entities. So at the end of the day, translation is, you used to be my home, but you, now you act like you don't know me. <laughs> Basically, you can take this building back but you are not going to go after me for my personal assets. So the banks are going to have to negotiate new terms and conditions with some of these investors, or a lot of this property is going to come back in their portfolio and they're going to have to discount that property significantly in order to attract a buyer. Once again, finally, commercial property is evaluated based on its income not a credit score like a residential mortgage. This will affect regional real estates. Give it time. So these banks are going to continue to get hit. This is going to spread out to a national problem, as I explained. So if you live in any large metropolitan area and you're starting to see office vacancies kick up, homeless, homelessness starts to kick up, crime starts to kick up, you need to reassess a better quality of life. So... I'm going to go ahead and end that um, on this particular note. I hope you guys got some really, really good practical information. If you enjoy my content, please do me the honor of smashing that like button. Please subscribe, comment, and share because I care. This was the Kevin Strong Show, and I'm going to leave you with my famous quote, keep your credit score up and your debt down. This was the Kevin Strong Show, and I'll see you guys in the next video.